Von Fry, legendary badass, not shy, telling you how it is, Von Fry will die. With the recent announcement of the Microsoft Xbox One, there has been some confusion about how used games are handled by the system. Xbox's spokesperson, mascot of sorts, Major Nelson, had this to say, and I am reading the quotes because I don't want to be called a false reporting hater. He says, We know there is some confusion around the used games on Xbox One, and wanted to provide a bit of clarification on exactly what we've confirmed today. While there have been many potential scenarios discussed, today we have only confirmed that we designed Xbox One to enable our customers to trade in and resell games at retail. Beyond that, we have not confirmed any specific scenarios. He continues, Another piece of clarification around playing games at a friend's house. Should you choose to play your games at your friend's house, there is no fee to play that game while you are signed in to your profile. Now allow me to introduce you to an old friend of the Fry household. The Nintendo Entertainment System. When I went to my friend's houses in the early 90s, uh, to play some old Nintendo, I, I mean this would be very early because it would be like about 1990 because around 91 we're getting the Super Nintendo. So late 80s even. Um, went to friends houses to play this baby. I didn't sign into no goddamn profiles let alone my own and I played their games and no one gave a shit. And we had a hell of a good time doing so. Let me tell you something. Um, I can count on one hand the number of times I went to a friend's house to play Xbox 360. ZERO! Because the system is set up so that you play online in your own basement covered in your own filth. Cheetos encrusted upon your t-shirt, spilt Mountain Dew lays on the floor. You don't want your friends seeing that. You want to be online talking big game about how you slept with everybody in the universe's mom. That's the smack talk that goes around on Xbox Live, the culture cultivated by Microsoft as they do away with the concept of real life. Now, when I had this baby, there was no big brother watching us on camera, insisting to be ever present as we played our games and had a hell of a good time switching off, tossing two controllers that could easily be acquired at any store for about 10 bucks a piece, and throwing them on the ground to the naysay of absolutely nobody because this sucker was absolutely indestructible. I have gone through, I, I have lost a little bit of count here, I think I'm at Xbox 360 number 8. It is a Star Wars edition. The previous 7 bit the dust. This thing, though it is gathering some dust, runs like a goddamn Swiss clock. So, Microsoft, you want to tell me that don't be afraid of signing into your profile at your friend's house. You'll still be able to play your games. The hell is that supposed to mean? So, are you saying that there is some concern? that there is some level of copyright protection enforced upon these games that is going to tie them to a console, maybe allow for a certain amount of friend spots to be allocated, maybe three, two, whatever. You say that there's no need to be concerned about playing your family's games. There will be ways to set this up. I'm just really confused because on your new system, you speak of this idea that was started up with the 360 where, oh, I bought the game, I want to burn it to the hard drive so it makes less noise, maybe runs a little smoother, less loading time. I think everybody likes that. Then you sell the game. Okay, you can't really play it anymore because you had to put the disc in the system. 
you're saying now you don't have to tr switch the disc out. I think people like that. I, I want to burn it to my console and not have to switch the disc around. That sounds good. I mean, hell, now I don't have really have to keep these discs on hand. So what do I do? Do I trade the game in? What happens then? Do you then somehow move this digital IP from the game to the new person who bought it, removing it from my system the next time I start up? What if I want to play a game offline? What if I'm at my grandparents' house? Hell, they don't need to be on the internet, so why would they buy it? And I want to just play a game. I take the system with me. I know I got to take the goddamn Kinect with me now because that's all part of the shit. Is that really convenient? So what happens here? Do I not get to play offline? You say I can play offline. I don't understand the circumstances. I don't understand how this market is supposed to be set up. You have an announcement. You're showing off a damn console and you can't get your shit together. You know, at least the people over at Sony, they showed a controller. They had that I mean that was a smooth ass move. You look you look at it. That was some smooth ass talking, Sony, because uh well don't we, we don't have all the details. All we got right now is the controller. Don't ask us about that shit. Well all we got is the damn controller. Your controller is more impressive than what I've seen from the Xbox One. I'm seeing a controller that's probably gonna cost 80 bucks that I have to buy to play your damn system even though it does all the exact same shit controller wise as the xbox 360 controller of which i have plenty because i bought eight of the suckers so oh boy where does this leave us you, you got me suckered in with this monthly uh, yearly fee i'm occurring this 60 bucks to be on your online system I'm paying $60 a year and I'm restricted to 100 friends. Facebook gives me 5,000. It's free as shit. So, um, what network am I really building up? I, I've got gamer score and achievements that are hard to come by. Seven Day Survivor on Dead Rising. That is a nifty achievement right there. I mean, I want to be able to show this stuff off. Do I want to have to keep paying? yearly for this paying yearly when I'm waiting for you to come up with a remodeled slim version already of the monstrous Xbox one because I am confident that the first model is going to be unreliable track record has shown me thus man I, I don't get you guys you know I look at the used game market and here's how I see this I buy a game new maybe if it looks like it's gonna be pretty kick-ass I want to do a video review on it because at one point in time I was leading the way on that shit angry Joe stole my show and now every kid in the goddamn country if not several others including Zimbabwe are completely ripping off my format and driving me down search results faster than you can say Yosemite Sam so you know, do I have much incentive to be playing any games? You know, not really. Do they have much to say in the way of story? Some of them do. Some of them are creative. It's getting harder and harder to find them because every source online is giving out 10 out of 10s. So, um, you know, I buy the game for 60 bucks. I beat it in a week or so. Two week turnaround on a game. You can sell on eBay. You bought it at 60, you sell it at 45. That's okay. That 45 goes back into my purchase of next games. What if you've got a lockdown code on these games so that when I buy it at 60 and I sell it for 45, the person who buys it then has to do an online pass as we've seen from EA and their shit titles for playing online. I mean, hell, you rent the game for $5 and you pay $5 to play it online. Ain't no one doing that. Imagine if every game had that. If I if I bought a single player game, a Final Fantasy game, and then had to pay to activate it online, to play it at all. You know, what if I played it offline? You said I could play offline. Is this is there maybe a special code for the first time buyer that allows offline access? And then you go in through Microsoft's store system 
and from there you download the online code so that all used games have to be played online. I think that's what's happening. I think that's that's the, the solution here that the, you guys have come up with. Not the solution, but for you guys the final solution. I can see why it's important for the developers of these games to make more money when they can make so much more to the huge market that is Android and iOS. Developing for them on a dime and make an ass load of money instead of spending tens of millions of dollars and maybe making a couple million sales as opposed to a hundred million downloads. I can see why there is need for them to make more money. Here's what I'm concerned about. I go to the movie theater not nearly as often as I used to because let's be honest they don't deserve to exist for many reasons. I can see any movie star up there and they're making say 10 million for the picture even if it's a bomb. The talent making these games for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Wii U, the talent is not making 10 million. Now they're probably making barely six figures and they can't afford a Ferrari. Not a new one. And they can't get on the waiting list. I'm, I'm really upset about where this money goes. Is it going to printing off Blu-rays and instruction manuals? Cases? Probably not. You'd probably rather us download all the stuff straight from you. If that's the case, and the most thorough way of protecting the content would be downloading straight from you guys. Why don't you give us a goddamn break? If I can buy the game, beat it, and sell it, and the game essentially costs me 15 bucks, how about you mark down these games online? You want to buy it in store? Okay, $60. You want to buy it from us? You know, we got less overhead. We're just storing the shit on a drive. You ain't buying a Blu-ray from us. You ain't uh, running off uh, box art. Hell, make it 50 or less. You give us a discount. Because if the gamers are being taxed anymore for playing games, they're gonna quit playing your games and they're gonna go back to this sucker right here. Old Reliable Dusty.